Good morning, seniors. As you're getting settled here, just a few things before we get started. We've had some technical difficulties with the projection screens, and I'm going to be walking you through the scholarship websites. So it'll be important that you can see the TVs, because that's what's going to be showing um, the websites from my computer. So if you have trouble seeing the TVs from where you're sitting, go ahead and move to a different table that you can see better. Um, as long as there's four people or less, that's fine. So again, if you cannot see the TV, one of the TVs from where you're at, um, please go ahead and move it this time before we get started. And then also, if you'd like to follow along as I'm going through these scholarship web pages, please feel free to do so on your phone. Also, we have a um, card of Chromebooks here if you'd like to get a computer and follow along with that as well. So please feel free to do that now before we get started. Okay, this morning we are going to be going over three different um, scholarship opportunities for you. We're going to be throwing quite a bit of information at you um, pretty quickly, so it's really important that I have your full attention this morning. Um, we'll have time for questions at the end as well, so if you have, have a question during the presentation, um, we'll definitely get that answered for you at the end. Each of you should have a packet of information in front of you with your name on it. If you do not have a packet of information with your name, please raise your hand now and we'll make sure we get that to you. Also, we have some pencils if you'd like to take notes. So if you don't have a writing utensil, let us know. We can get that for you as well. Okay. I'm going to direct your attention to the packet in front of you. The first thing you're going to see there is an up-to-date transcript. This is going to be a really important document for you throughout the scholarship process. A lot of the applications that you are going to submit are going to require that you uh, provide your transcript. Included on that transcript should be your unweighted and weighted GPA, which you will have to report for many scholarship applications as well. One thing I do want to point out about the transcript, a lot of these scholarship applications are going to want to see your first semester grades. Now, we haven't finished our first semester yet, so that's not on your current transcript. We have a tentative date, February 11th, The seniors will be able to pick up a updated copy of their transcript in the counseling office. That way you can use it to submit your scholarship applications that have first semester grades listed. And so this is a copy, an up-to-date copy as of right now to get you started. And then on February 11th, like I said, that's a tentative date. We will confirm that and send out more information of how you were supposed to pick those up. We will have those updated transcripts for you so that you can submit them with first semester grades, as a lot of those scholarship applications will require that. So just a little bit of information about the transcript there. The first of three scholarship opportunities that we're going to talk about this morning are local scholarships that can be found on our Miamisburg High School webpage. So I'm going to walk you through how to access those scholarships now. So if you just go to MiamisburgCitySchools.org, you can hover over the Schools tab, and then you will see Miamisburg High School. Scroll down, and you will see Counseling Services and MHS Scholarship Opportunities. As you scroll down on the MHS Scholarship Opportunities webpage, you are going to see a list of all the local scholarships that are available for Miamisburg High School students only. Each of these scholarships have a 
brief description describing uh, the reason that they were founded. And um, they do provide some criteria about the students they are looking to award the scholarship to. So, for example, let's just say as you're scrolling through the high school webpage, you come across the Maria DiMatteo Parker Scholarship. It gives some background information about why the scholarship was founded. And this $500 scholarship will be will be awarded to a female high school senior who has lettered in basketball, softball, and or tennis and plans to use the money to further her education at a four-year college. The recipient should be someone who captures Rhea's love and passion for athletics and competition. So as you read that, if you think that you might be a good fit for that scholarship opportunity, what you can do is click on the blue title of the scholarship, and that will bring up the application. And you can see some of the criteria here listed above. It's very important when you are completing these applications, make sure that you provide the scholarship selection committee with everything that they're asking for. For example, for this particular scholarship, you need a most recent transcript with GPA and ACT, acceptance letters from a college or university, and two letters of recommendation, and an essay. So as you're filling out these applications for the local scholarships on the Mimesburg website, make sure you're looking at all the criteria that they're asking for and you attach that to your application. Another quick example here. Let's say that you might be interested in the Easterling Studios Award. It's awarded to an MHS graduating senior majoring in graphic design, journalism, or any art field. Click on the scholarship name, and it pulls up the application. Again, please pay attention to the essay information and the required attachments. It's very important that you give this selection committee everything that they're looking for uh, in your application. Okay, I want to go over how these local scholarships will be submitted. For each one of these local scholarships on the Miamisburg High School website that you apply for, you will complete the application and print it out in hard copy format. And you will turn in two copies of the exact same application to your counselor in the guidance office. So for example, if I was applying for the Eastling Studios Scholarship, I would complete everything, print out two of the exact same copies, and hand it to my counselor. Now the reason we ask for two copies is one copy we keep on file here with us, the other copy we send to the selection committee for review. So for each one of these local scholarships, you'll print out two hard copies and you'll hand it to your counselor before March 5th at 8 a.m. March 5th at 8 a.m. is the final deadline to submit local scholarships uh, that are on the Mimesburg webpage. At 8.01, and that's a hard deadline, guys, at 8.01, the counselors will not be accepting any more local scholarship applications. Any questions about local scholarships before we move on? Okay, another scholarship opportunity that I want to talk to you guys about are scholarships that are offered through the Dayton Foundation. If you click on this blue link here on our scholarship page, it says Mimesburg Schools Education Foundation slash Dayton Foundation Scholarship Opportunities. That blue link will take you directly to the Dayton Foundation website where you will be able to create an account and start to apply for these scholarships. So you'll scroll down here to getting started. And then you see set up your student account, you click here, and it will take you directly to the application itself for the Dayton Foundation. Now, for the Dayton Foundation, you create a general application that you upload all of your information to, 
and then it matches you with scholarships that you're eligible for. So when you're creating your general application for the Dayton Foundation, it's important that you be as specific as possible and detailed as possible because the more detail in your application, the more scholarships you might be eligible for. You have a, a sheet in your packet of information there with um, Scholarship Connect in big words at the top. I'd like, to, like you to find that sheet. On the top of that sheet, there is a list of things that will be required that you submit for your general application. The first one is the transcript. Uh, now this is when that February 11th date of picking up an updated transcript comes into play because Dayton Foundation selection committees will want to see your first semester grades. And again, we will send out more information and confirm that for you on how you can pick those updated transcripts up with first semester grades uh, closer to that February 11th date. One thing that the Dayton Foundation wanted me to communicate to you is that there can be no punctuation in the file names for the documents that you submit to the Dayton Foundation application. For whatever reason, if you put a period, a comma, any punctuation in the file name that you submit, the selection committee cannot see the document. So, for example, if I was submitting my transcript to the Dayton Foundation, I might just put Z Meyer's transcript without any punctuation. That way they can see uh, the document. For whatever reason, when that punctuation is added, it creates a problem on their site. So they wanted me to make sure that you were aware of that. Uh, the next thing on the list there is the resume and essay. In talking with the folks at the Dayton Foundation, the resume and essay is really um, how the selection committees decide the recipients of their scholarships. In my communications with them, they told me that these are the most crucial part of the application. Please make sure you edit the resume and essay for you know, grammar errors, spelling, punctuation, things like that. Your resume and your essay is a representation of who you are to the selection committee. So make sure you edit those documents, uh, put your best foot forward there. Oh, also, if you have picked up extra responsibilities at home during COVID, maybe you are, have been babysitting a sibling or helping out more around the house, they would like for you to add that to your resume as well. So they wanted me to be sure to communicate that to you. Uh, the FAFSA. You do have to have completed the FAFSA in order to submit a general application with the Dayton Foundation. However, you don't need to upload the entire document, just the first page of your FAFSA with your expected family contribution listed. They just need that first page. College acceptance letter. If you do not have a college acceptance letter yet, that is okay. They would like for you to upload a Word document stating the colleges that you have applied to so far and that you are just waiting to hear back from them. They, they do not want the, the fact that um, you have not yet gotten an acceptance letter to stop you from applying. So just go ahead and upload a Word document and let them know which colleges you've applied to and that you're waiting to hear back. And they said that will be just fine. Recommendation letters. Please speak with your teachers, counselor, coach, uh, before adding them to the recommendation page on your application for the Dayton Foundation. We have plenty of time. These uh, are not due until March 5th. So please give your teachers a couple weeks in order to get these recommendations in for you. Don't wait until the last couple days to ask them. Uh, give them plenty of time so that they can uh, complete the recommendation for you. GPA with the Dayton Foundation. They have asked the students submit both their unweighted and weighted GPA, and you should have both on your transcripts. So they've asked that you submit both of those. 
Once you complete your general application for the Dayton Foundation, you are going to be matched with specific scholarships that you can apply for. And now these scholarships may ask you to submit additional materials. So pay attention to each one and make sure that you're submitting everything that they need. Also, as you update your general application, let's say on February 11th, uh, you get your updated transcript and you submit that, make sure you review your list of scholarships that you've been matched with. It may have changed. So there may be more opportunities available for you there. At the bottom of that Dayton Foundation page, you'll see some tips there. Again, uh, no punctuation when uploading documents. If you did not take the ACT or SAT, you have to enter something in there for the application. If you have not taken it, just enter a zero. When you get to the end of your general application, if there's a problem with submitting it, uh, make sure you scroll up to the top page. There is a pink error box that will show up, and it will tell you um, what you need to do in order to submit your application. So if you're having trouble, make sure you check there. Also, there are two uh, contacts there at the bottom of your yellow sheet. One is for Michelle Brown, and the other is for Jessica Schreiber. There are our contacts at the Dayton Foundation, and they are really helpful in answering any questions that you have about the application process. Obviously, reach out to your, your counselor as well. I'd be happy to help. Before I turn it over to Mrs. Strong to talk about the Dayton Montgomery County Scholarship Program, I want to be really, really clear about the deadlines uh, for these scholarships. The last thing that I would want is for a student to miss out on an opportunity because of confusion about when these scholarships are to be submitted. The local scholarships that are printed off the Minesburg High School webpage, as well as the Dayton Montgomery County Scholarship Program scholarships that Mrs. Straub is getting ready to talk about, those are both due to your counselor, two copies, in person, on March 5th at 8 a.m. So local scholarships printed off high school webpage, Dayton Montgomery County Scholarship Program, both due March 5th at 8 a.m. In person, hard copy, two copies. The local scholarships with the Dayton Foundation, those are also due on March 5th. However, those are completed online. And so you have until 4 p.m. on March 5th in order to get those applications submitted. So 8 p.m. on the 5th for local and Dayton Montgomery County Scholarship Program, you have the rest of that day until 4 p.m. to finish your online applications through the Dayton Foundation. I'm gonna turn it over to Mrs. Stroud now and she's gonna to talk to you a little bit about the Dayton Montgomery County Scholarship Program. Good morning, everyone. I know this is a lot of information to take in, so this evening, this weekend, sit down and go through all these scholarships and at least cross out the ones you're not eligible for, and then spend the next six weeks filling out the applications for the ones you are eligible for. This is your best chance to get some money. These scholarships you're only competing with students either in Williamsburg High School or Montgomery County. So your chances are really good. These scholarships are worth your time. Now, not all of you, but some of you have a white and green paper in your packet. If you have a 3.0 and above, you will have this white and green sheet. This is a different scholarship. It's not listed on the website. You have to have these papers. You have to keep these papers. If you have a 3.0 or above, you're eligible for Dayton Montgomery County Scholarship Program. You have a username and password. Do not lose this. It could be worth some valuable money. In order to apply for this, and it's an easy application. It is online. It's one page. When everything's completed, you print it out and bring it to your take it to your counselor. But there are three things you must have: the 3.0 or above, 
you must have completed your FAFSA, and you have to be Pell eligible for this money. That means probably your EFC on your FAFSA is zero to about 5,000. Your FAFSA will actually say you are Pell eligible. That's how you know if you can apply for this. And of course, if you're not sure, print out that first page of your FAFSA and bring it to us, and we can help you figure that out. On the green page, it shows how much you'll get for going to a two-year school, how much you could be awarded for going to a four-year school, and how many colleges that are listed at the bottom of that green page will match the money that the Dayton Foundation's giving you. So if this is applicable to you, it is a very good scholarship, and again, just one page, really, to complete. Again, when you're totally finished with this one, you print it out and bring it to us. Those of you who have the white and green sheet, keep this separate because again, it has your username and password on it. And of course, if you have any questions, just see your counselor. All right, so I know we've thrown a lot of information at you guys this morning. Um, I want to take a minute to answer any questions that you have. right now but as you are looking at this information thinking about this over the next couple of days um, please reach out to your counselor if you have any questions is there any confusion or any questions regarding the deadlines for the submission of these scholarships are also listed on all the information we gave you as well. Um, thank you guys so much. You are free to go. And again, if you have questions about this, just let us know. We'd be happy to help you.